your hands together and welcome Pastor Jeff Arnold. He's going to preach for us. And he's going to preach the God of what is left. That's the God that I serve. Put your hands together again. Come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. the best I possibly can not to use any street lingo, not not any slang, and uh, so you people that get upset, I'll do my best, and for all the terrible hate mail you received because of me, I apologize. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Uh, I don't think in 25 or 26 times that I've mounted this pulpit that I've ever begun with this statement, I have a word from the Lord. And, uh, but I do. The Lord has challenged me in a very unusual and powerful way. And uh, I know usually I'm the last guy up and I'm supposed to hit the ball out of the park. And uh, sometimes you can win a game with a bunt. In fact, sometimes you can win a base of loader if the batter gets hit in the head with the ball. So I want to just talk to you, if you'll let me talk to you. But I'd like for you to talk back to me. I was listening to this wonderful, wonderful black preacher recently, and, and every time he'd make, a, he'd make a point, he would turn around and say, you know, uh, right about there would be a good place for an amen. And so every time he'd say something, the people did their little Mount Rushmore impersonation, he'd go. And we're starting to do that back in our home church. And so uh, before I even get my finger out now, they're already starting, amen. Thank you for all the kind remarks. Uh, I'm going to uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30. I know you're waiting for that. Thank you for my wonderful church family back home that are fasting and praying for my very super friend, Harold Hoffman, who called and said that him and his church would pray. Now, this is going to be an absolute insult and shame if I don't do good. With all them people praying, if I don't do good, it's because you folks don't pray good. Amen. Try not to keep you too long. I know everybody's very tired. First Samuel uh, 30 came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag, smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire, had taken the women captives that were therein, and they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away, went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, Their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David's two wives were taken captives, Ahinam and the Jezreelitess and Abigail, the wife of Nabal the Carmelite. David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him. Boy, things haven't changed much, has they? They're following this guy as long as he's whipping up on folks and doing things and feeding them and all that stuff, keeping them on welfare and everything's fine. And then a little hell breaks loose. Let's kill that sucker right there. <laughs> and then David's a little late because they did that before with Moses. As long as they were eating the manna and they had that, that nice quail to come in and drinking water from the place, but a little hell broke loose and they said, we've got to take him out. And so here we are on the church age, and the Lord's ready to come, and we do the same thing to our people. We're doing great as long as everything's going good in the church, little hell breaks loose, and we've got to take him out. Brother Wilson, it's so good to see you. God bless you. Just stay with me just for a minute, okay? And David was greatly distressed. They're going to say, let's stone him for all their sons and daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. And David said to Abathar, the priest, Abimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathar brought forth the, the ephod to David, and David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop, and shall I overtake them? And he answered him, uh, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. It's late. I had another scripture I wanted to read, but it's, it's time. Uh, we need to get there real quick. I want to be in and out of the shoot here in a few minutes. 
It's from Daniel chapter 4. You go home and read it for your homework assignment. It's the story of where Nebuchadnezzar had this dream, and he saw this massive tree, and it had beautiful leaves and foliage, and it had fruit, and critters climbed all over it and stayed underneath in the fowls of the air lodged in it. And there was a watcher, an angel that came down from heaven and said, uh, strip the tree. Tell all the critters to get out from underneath there. Tell the birds to get lost. I'm fixing to mess with this tree. And, and he said, we strip it down and we, and we rip it down. He said, I'm going to take it to the ground. And the only thing that's up, and this is what I feel like, that's where we are. Some of us are just, all we are right now is a stump. And he said, he said, I said, cut the whole tree down, but leave the stump. Now, I know it's hard for saints to accept the fact that you just might be a stump. But he said, leave the stump and put a band of iron, brass around it. Watch. Because the kingdom is still secured to him, Daniel said. So what I'm showing you now is that they, he's gone through a period of loss. Okay? But he's going to win because of what's left. According to Acts 10.36, Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Look at someone and say, he's Lord of what I just lost. And he's Lord of what I got left. Lord, bless the teaching. Let me be a blessing to these sweet people. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated. Nobody long. One of the greatest needs that I think that we have right now is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is that we need to be able to get a fresh vision of Jesus and realize that He's Lord of all. He's Lord of your trouble and He's Lord of your triumphs. He's Lord of your victories and He's Lord of your failures. He may not create your failures, but He's still the Lord over your failure. Now, I'm not... That, that was good. That, that was good. See, there's three things you need to understand about the Lord tonight. He's the Lord of creation. He's the Lord of recreation. Here it is. And He's Lord of what's left. That's too wussified for me. Lord of creation, Lord of recreation, and He's Lord of what I got left. And it don't matter how little I got left, He's the Lord of what I got left. He was Lord when I lost my stuff, and He's lost, and, and He's the Lord of what I got left. And if He blessed what I lost, He's able to bless what I've got left. Because He's the King of kings, and He's the Lord of lords, and He's the great I Am, and He's the Master of the universe, and His Word is law. Stay with me. I'd like everybody to wake up at once, please. 2010 to... To me, has been a horror year. It's been a year of terrible losses. We've we we've somehow been impacted by so many various storms in our lives. We have had earthquakes and tsunamis and floods, and you folks have had these oil spill impacts, and and now we've got this financial uh, uh, recession, and people have lost their jobs, and we've got people in our own church, we've got people out of work, and we've got people in financial fiasco, we've got folks that are losing their homes, and we've had people that have lost their cars, and they've lost their properties, and some people, unfortunately, in Pentecost have lost their direction. And that's why I'm here tonight. I'm fixing uh, You ain't going to scare me. I do this for a living. There's a lot of people this year have lost their health, and I'm, I, I'm here to tell you that Pentecost has, has, has been impacted by an unprecedented loss of great leaders and great people. We lost the prophet T.W. Barnes. We lost brother and sister Pugh. We lost Nona Freeman. We lost Priscilla Magruder. We lost Barbara Willoughby. We lost Royce Elms and Hugh Rose and David Hennigan. We just lost C.M. Beckton, and we lost Charlie Mahaney. And now we've lost the great man G.A. Mangan and just recently Merle Ewing. And just a little while back, we lost brother and sister Kinsey and we lost the Urshans and we lost the Lumpkins. 
and Sister Dugas passed away, and, and now I just got a call uh, that Brother Seagrave's wife just passed away, and we lost Sister Manning, and we've been hit by a tremendous loss. Please hear me what I feel the Lord said to me. All this loss has created a massive void for my body. And you need to tell them that in this massive void, the adversary wants to sweep in and he wants to cause chaos and trouble for us. But he said, I am the Lord of what's left. Never mind. Never mind what you lost. I'm the Lord of what's left. And he's got as much power now as he ever had before. And he can bless what we've got left. So it goes beyond what we have lost. Woo! Woo! I saw you, Tom, and I had your mom's name down here when, when your sweet daddy lost her and we called and prayed for them and we've just had a lot of losses, but, but you need to understand something that loss is a part of life. And I'm not in any way belittling or, or saying your sorrow isn't real and, and I'm not trying to hurt any of you people, but, 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 but you got to hear me. If you're not careful, you'll stay in this valley, in this void of what you have lost and not realize that the God of heaven said, I'm not looking at what you lost. I'm fixing to work on what you got left. Have you got a little bit of faith left? Have you got a little bit of hope left? Have you got a little bit of desire left? Have you got a little... I serve a God who's the Lord of what I've got left. I may not have a lot of money, but He can bless what i got left. I may not have a lot of power, but He can bless what i got left. Never mind what you lost. It's time to refocus tonight. We need to stop focusing on what we've lost and who we've lost and why we've lost it and start focusing on who's left, what's left, and who's the Lord of what's left. Is that it? You politicians, that's it? That's as far as you're going, just a finger? I'm having a little trouble getting started here because they put me on the end of four superintendents. And I don't know if that's going to affect me spiritually, emotionally, or mentally, or what. I mean, four of them. District superintendent, bishop, another superintendent, uh, a big kahuna somewhere. He's just... Got, Little old pipsqueak Arnie on the end here. And I said, well, I ain't got your position, and I ain't got your position. I ain't got your, I ain't got your money. I ain't got your position, I ain't got your money. But you know what I got? Whatever I got left, I got a master that can multiply what I got left. I may have lost some things, but I got something left. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And I'm here to tell you, this church is fixing to experience a monumental harvest because we have the Lord of what's left. Woo! Hey! Woo! We're not careful. You sit down. We're not careful. We'll be in the mother grubs and sucking our thumb. Say, well, they left my church. You better be thanking God. Now, you don't believe this stuff. I do. You don't believe it. I do. And I know I'm right with you. None of you believe it. I am totally convinced that if anybody leaves your ministry or leaves your assembly, God is saying to you, you did not need them for you to fulfill his calling in your life. And nobody can transfer to your church and under your ministry unless God says, I'm putting them there so I can help you fulfill your destiny. We have a destiny, my friends, and the destiny is coming out of what we've got left. Woo! What do you think? I know you might have had a child died, a spouse died, a marriage fell apart, your finances have collapsed, your kids have gone crazy, chosen very poorly, 
Your faith has faded. Your hopes are dim. You're forced to deal with what's left. Well, then deal with it for crying out loud. That ain't a curse word, is it? No. I tell you, you virgin voices up here make me nervous. You ought to walk along with me in Brooklyn in a while. I'll make your hair stand up. What do you think we got doctors for? You know what doctors do besides making a big living and practice? Doctor's ministry is real easy. They work with what's left after the accident, after the sickness, after the disease. They don't care how much you've lost. They look at how much you got left. And I said, I think I can fix that spine. I think I can fix that eye. I think I can help them. I think I can give them a new hip. I think I can... Oh, I know a doctor whose name is Jesus. He don't need a whole lot to get something fixed. He can look at us and we ain't got but a little bit left. He says, I can fix that. Hold it. No, don't sit down. You just did real good. But now, turn and look at somebody and say, I know the man's telling the truth. Because when he found me, there wasn't much good left. There wasn't much great left. There wasn't much hope left. There wasn't, ah, there wasn't much faith left. He don't need a whole lot. All you got to do is let him have the little bit that you got left. You sit down. I'm trying to go fast as I can. What do you think we got insurance companies for? Besides ripping you off. Big print gives it to you, little print takes it away. What's the purpose of insurance companies? Here's what they are. They come in to deal with what's left after the storm and after the fire. And after the flood, please hear me. Don't let that stupid nincompoop attitude sweep in this Pentecostal movement that something is a total loss. The devil is a liar. We better not throw anybody away. I don't care how messed up they are. I don't care how sick they are. I don't care how many times. Oh, I wish I had a witness now. How many times they've fallen in the mud. How many times they broke their promise to you, to God or somebody else. Don't throw nobody away. We serve a God who can fix anybody, no matter how little they've got left. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I, I, I promised the Lord that I'm not going to look back here like so many these preachers. I don't know why they preach to you. There's 3,000 people out there, and they keep turning around. I'm only going to look at you once, just once, and it's over. Okay. Auto body shops. Uh-huh. You know what they do? Yeah. Fix what's left. Thank you. Thank you. you come in, and your car looks like it's went through a meat grinder. <laughs> Windshield's gone, roof's gone, front axle's bent, the whole frame's bent. And the guy looks at it and he goes, well, what do you think? He goes, yeah, I can fix that. Yeah, no problem. I can take care of it. You really? Sure. Have you ever rode behind a car that rode down the street like this? They went to the wrong body shop. I don't mean to hurt you. I'm not looking back there no more. I don't mean to hurt your feelings, but I know some saints are supposed to be saints, and they go down the street like this, too. Their front end is out of line, and their rear end is out of line. Sometimes you can't pass up a 
a wrecked car. You've got to put it on a machine that will straighten the frame. Sometimes some of us who are whoremongers and drunks and liars and jailbirds and cheats, we didn't have to just do a three-minute little repentance like some of you did. Man, we took days and hours and weeks because we were so twisted and turned. But I got news for you. I've been to a wrecking shop that has fixed my soul. I've been to see somebody who looked at said, I am the Lord of what is left. You ready? You ready? I won't call you Uncle Bill. I'll call you Brother Haley, Superintendent Haley, okay? Are you ready for this, El Superintendent Haley? Watch this one. See if this one gets you to do more than a finger. Ready? We need in our churches, on the front of our doors, over our baptistry, all over the building, what I found in when I was at a car show, at a restoration show. Here was this great big sign. It's a big burly guy, all hairy. He's got this big ugly head. He's got about 200 pound club, and he's slapping himself in the head. And the statement reads, "We fix wrecks." Took out my pen. I said. I know somebody that fixes wrecks. I know some. If an auto body shop wouldn't turn you down, and an insurance company wouldn't turn you down, and a doctor wouldn't turn you down, don't let the devil lie to you and say God would turn you down. He's the greatest doctor. He's the master of everything. He can fix anything that is left. Right, I'm sorry. Most of us don't like leftovers. That's what God built his church with. Trash and junk becomes treasure and jewel. Now, I'm going to get mad about this right now. Huh? You people over here doing your little Mount Rushmore impersonation. You've been saved too long. I'm going to go a little further. I'm not looking behind me because I promised myself I wouldn't do it. I'm going to go a little further. I wish some of you cats would dig out your real testimony and not your church testimony. Never mind, like, I thank the Lord He saved me and turned my life. Forget that trash. Let's hear the real thing. Oh, I was a whoremonger. I was a liar. I was a drug dealer. Man, I was a rat. I was a bum. I was a jailbird. But He brought me out. He brought me out of the miry clay. He set my feet on the rock to stay. He put a song in my mouth. Even praise unto the Lord. We've got a Lord of everything you got left. Don't lose your faith over what you've lost. Am I doing okay? I'm not looking over there. So far. Well, I won't dirty it up. You heard you said that. Why? I won't dirty it up. The devil is trying to tell us right now. Look at what you lost. I'm here to lift my voice in a clarion call to this wonderful movement right here. I'm not Pentecostal's policeman. I couldn't get elected dog catcher in this movement. That's fine. I don't need nothing. But And I'm not here to try to tell you I'm smart and you're dumb. No. I just have a word from the Lord that the Lord just arrested me and said, there's a great void in my body now. And if the people of God don't start getting a hold of what's left and seeing me as the Lord of, that's left, they will allow the embassy to sneak in and start sowing false doctrine and stupid stuff and crazy stuff because we've lost these great leaders. If we would let God work with what we've got left, God's got leaders in this house right now. God's got new people right now that can step into the realm of the Holy Ghost. We've got people coming up in the ranks right now that can still cast out devils and still prophesy and still heal the sin. Yes, we do. You 
you see that? Stay with me. Ready, Mike? Excuse me, Brother Williams. You ready? The Lord. I, I saw so much broken pottery around here. I ain't never buying a pot. Hey, we're breaking so many pots around this place. Jesus, have mercy. Bang. One guy, Bruce Howell's throwing them on the ground. Bang. The other guy's banging them with a hammer. I said, Jesus, have mercy. And when I'm praying and I'm studying, Sister Mickey, the Lord speaks to me. And he says, didn't you get the picture? I was giving it to you. What? He said, I'm the guy that takes all, all where the leftover pieces are. And I make it another vessel. Oh, I wish I could get some help here right now. I wish I could get some resurrected praise in this house. I wish I could get some worship and praise from people who He put you back together. He picked up your broken pieces. He worked a work in... He worked a work in my life. He worked a work in your life. He's going to do greater works coming down the road, my friend. Don't be discouraged by what you've lost. Look with hope and faith and expectation of what you got left and who the Lord is that you got left. Woo! Yeah, pardon me. I'm a little excited. I've been waiting all week. You, you, you sit down. Just stay with me. The reason the devil wants us to look at what we've lost, and I'm not minimizing the grand and glorious and wonderful, gifted, God-blessed people that we've lost. I'm not minimizing that. I feel the hole in my own soul. I have been so perplexed about what in the world are we going to do. We've had a gigantic number of awesome people. Godly people, Holy Ghost fed and led people. And there's this vacuum. And if you don't take care of the vacuum, the adversary will come in. And while you're playing with the vacuum, he'll sow. Now, I, I can't look back at you. And I don't know whether I'm allowed to say this. So I don't know how to ask you without looking back at you. Well, what do I care? I've been here 20. Fire me. Fire me. It's okay. I am choking to death on the emerging church. I don't care what you say. It's a bunch of baloney. It's a bunch of foolishness. It's a bunch of folly. It's going to end up in disaster. It's going to end up in chaos. It's going to end up in shipwreck. And we don't need to leave this void. Let them get their hands in on this thing. We were called to be godly people, holy people, righteous people, modest people, moral people, separated people. Forget that emerging church stuff. There ain't no such thing as an emerging church. What your feelings are. Sorry. Emerging, purging, smirging. I'll tell you what it is. It's poopy. Oh, you say, well, that's a bad word. Well, how about dung? You get all mad because I say crud or garbage? How about the Bible when the Scripture says, if you're not with chastisement, that you're not a son, you're a... No, no. What are you going to do? Correct God? Tell him to wash his mouth out? Do you think after almost 2,000 years that Jesus burned this church, impregnated this church, blessed this church, led this church, and these last few days he's going to step in the middle of this generation and say, I was only kidding. I didn't mean that. I was just playing. That was some hokey pokey. That devil is a liar. That's not hokey pokey. Godliness is profitable. 
Godliness is profitable. Holiness is what it's going to take to go to New Jerusalem. You didn't sit down. Didn't, didn't mean to cause no trouble. Hadn't looked back there. How? That's what a word from the Lord. Say, why are you so mad? I'll tell you why I'm so mad. My mother's dead. My father's dead. My grandparents are dead. I just buried my two brothers. They're all dead. My wife's father's dead. My wife's mother's dead. They're all dead. We ain't got nobody in Pentecost. And we came in this thing. I was a hell-rising drunk honky-tonker. And I came in this thing and you told me I need to change the way I dress. I need to change how I practice my life. I need to change all this stuff. I smoked three packs a day and 50 Tipperillos every two weeks. I drank a bottle of Caramel Arrow Rum every weekend and a, and a case of beer. I was a happy man. I was the original McDonald Miles and Smiles. I couldn't talk right, I couldn't walk right, but I was happy. And then I came around you folks, and you folks were against everything but fresh air. Don't wear this, don't watch that, don't do this, don't do that, don't smoke that, don't do that. No, you can't, couldn't do that. Oh, that's bad. You could, I couldn't, when I came in, you couldn't even play pickup sticks. It was a gambling game. You couldn't play Monopoly because it had dice. Wasn't supposed to have insurance because it was trust in the arm of the flesh. And now we sell it. Well, we may be a little loony on some things, and we may have put the flag a little too far up the beach. Hear this, old buzzard. We did it as unto the Lord. We did it because we wanted to please God. We did it because we'd rather be safe than sorry. We we did it because we want to put as much distance between us and the life we used to live as possible. That safety margin isn't our salvation. It's a safety margin. I'm 66. I'll be 67 shortly. You think I'm going to start playing with the world and get as close to the world? Well, just what dirty thing can I watch? What nasty thing can I listen to? Just, uh, I'm going to tell you again what I've told you for years. As soon as the activity of the Holy Ghost diminishes in our lives, the appetite for entertainment increases. So the worst loss you and I could ever experience is the loss of the presence of God. And it terrifies me every time I read that statement from Saul. When Saul turns around, he says, The Lord answereth me not, neither by Urim and Thummim, neither by prophets and dreams. Jesus, help me. Do not let me go through this world without hearing your voice. Chew me out, knock me down, talk to me, whatever it is. But don't let the voice of this world drown out the voice of the Spirit. That's that's why we got to be careful what we allow in our lives. It can deaden the voice of the Holy Ghost. Uh, you be seated. You be seated. Stay with me. See, the reason the devil wants us to look at what we've lost, whether it's in people or persons or situations or things, it's because if we keep looking at what we've lost, it will paralyze our faith. It will molest. It will molest and capture our expectations. Well, what are we going to do without Brother Urshan, J.T. Pugh? What are we going to do? James Kilgore's in the Philippines. Great Brother Lumpkin, what a man of wisdom. What are we going to do without him? What are we going to do without Mara Ewing and that tremendous singing and that anointing that he had? What are we going to do without G.A. Mangan? I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but I'm going to tell you something. Sister Vestalane, we're just going to let God work with what we got left. Now, you say what you want to, but I'm not saying this disrespectfully. I was here. I heard the princess today. 
God is blessing what she's got left. <laughs> I'm sorry she ain't left, but God's going to use you greater than you can imagine, sweetie. You've got a gifting of God in your life. You've got, oh, yes, you do. You've got an anointing in your life. You cry your tears, pray your prayers. But I'm telling you, there's thousands and thousands of people in this movement are waiting for that girl to get up on that platform and talk to us again. I'm here to tell you, God can bless you more than you were blessed before. God can use you more than you were used before. You ready? Let's, can, you, can I talk a few minutes here? Read for me, Brother Williams, my dear friend. He's reading from Genesis 13 and verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abel. Now watch this. This is cool. After that lot was separated. Stop. There's some revelations God ain't going to give to you until you get rid of some people. I have wasted years and years of my life pastoring in Gainesville. I've tried to be a good pastor. I'm probably not. I'm a real good preacher. I'm probably not a real good pastor. But I'm, I'm faithful. I don't have no whoremongering. I don't have no affairs with the choir. I don't steal the money. I'm a moral guy. But, but you got to hear me. I, I just... I, I've spent years, and I've been praying and repenting and praying because I had people in our church family that wouldn't do right. And I kept bending over backwards and tolerating this little antic and tolerating that little antic. And, well, will you please stop cutting that? Would you please stop wearing that? Would you please stop doing that? And I would bend over backwards because I believed they could be an asset to the kingdom. And now this past couple of years when I took a stand against it, it blew up in my face. Pow! And all this time, I wasted ten years. I should have punched you in the mouth before. And I'm not for running people off. We need to tolerate as much as we can. But sooner or later, we need to come up with something and say, Now, God, these people are not honest. They are not open. They are not transparent. And I am wasting my energy dealing with people that don't want to do right. And I'm insulting all the people that are trying to do right. I'm not looking back. Uh -uh. You sit down. Did you hear me, Reverend Jim? Nobody wants to lose anybody. I grieve all the time. I got people that have walked out, man, like stormtroopers. They walked out. You know why we try to tolerate so much stupid stuff? Because we think talent is better than anointing. Well, my God, she can really sing. Yeah, but she's an idiot. She got the morals of a barnyard dog. I don't care whether she can sing the notes off the roof. Yeah, but boy, she sings and she really makes that. I'm, I'm, I'm not looking back here. I'm talking about this emerging puke. Listen to me. We better leave this assembly. You hear me? I got a warning from the Lord. Tell the people. They better leave this assembly, and they better start checking who they're letting on their platform, who they're letting run their music programs, who they're putting in charge of their youth programs, because they may be gifted, they may be talented, but they ain't going to last much longer. After a while, they're going to lead your youth group in the wrong direction. They're going to take your music into a bunch of funky rock stuff. I'm telling you what I know. I've been over backwards. You said huh? I've been over backwards trying to help people that were so gifted and talented. See, that's I made that my own stupid mistake, brother Jim Stark. My own stupid mistake. I don't know why I didn't read the Bible. I don't know why I didn't understand the difference between Korah and Moses. Moses is tongue-tied. He's got a speech impediment. Cora could have been Obama. He was eloquent with his words. He can make... 
Moses trying to get these idiots to stop. He can't do it. Korah opens his mouth and he gets 250 princes to stand against the preacher. Okay, I'm going to say it anyway. You ready? You better be careful if you run with a Korah because the earth will always swallow up a Korah. I said, the earth opened up its mouth to swallow Korah. You better watch out. Korah is no match for an anointed person. Even if you can't sing well, you're better off having an anointed person playing your piano, playing your ukulele, playing anything, than to have somebody who's just talented. I'm not against talented people, but sometimes talented people are a pain in the neck. Because their motives are not clean. Their attitudes are not right. They just perform. This generation better wake up. We better stop paying people to perform. We better stop hiring people because they can do a good job. This ain't Amway. I'm telling you, I know I got a word from the Lord. I do. I'm not trying to be ugly or mean. I'm just telling you what I know. I'm too old a buzzard now to turn around and start playing this nudie flutie junk. That ain't going to happen with me. My wife ain't taking her clothes off. That ain't happening. What she's got is mine because I paid for it. I don't need nobody else messing with it. Now you laugh all you want to. But the shorter these dresses are getting, we're getting in trouble. I don't want to see your bosom. I know what bosoms look like. We better watch out about all this cleavage around us. I don't care how many people you lose over standards of godliness and conduct. Don't worry about who and what you lose. You're serving a Lord of what's left. And He's able to bless you. And He's able to increase you. <laughs> Sit down just a second, please. I'm sorry, Reverend uh, Williams. I'm sorry. To, and he says, and, and, and start on that verse 14 again. I'm going to see if I can get the, the living dead resurrected And over the here. Lord said unto Abraham. No, and the Lord said unto Abraham. After that lot was separated. In other words, God don't talk to you about some things until stupid leaves. Now you see, he, he doesn't say stupid. I call them stupid. You know why? Because we got that same curse in Pentecost. We got people that don't walk with God. They walk with people who walk with God. Abraham walked with God. Lot walked with Abraham. Elisha, I feel like talking. Elisha walked with God. Gehazi walked with Elisha. Paul walked with God. Demas walked with Paul. You got to have your own walk with God. You got to have your own experience with God. I don't care how many BOTTs you come to and camp meetings and conferences. Sooner or later, you've got to turn off the TV, shut down the video, pull down the blinds, put your face on the floor, and get a hold of God. Okay, okay. I'm going as fast as I can. I ain't looking at you. I'm over here. And he said, he said, soon as Lot was gone... He said, Lift up now thine eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. Now, you understand what he's just saying? I, I, I cut the reading down because we're late. But, but, but see, Lot had all these cattle and all these herds, and so did Abe, and it was wiping the place out. They were, they, they, they were losing all the grass. They, they, they had too much stuff. So they're fighting and arguing. There's strife between them. And Abraham being the believer and Lot being the wacko. Because wackos don't ever try to get things right. They try to get the best of the deal. And he said to him, he said, now look, we're brethren. Let's not be strife among us. I'll tell you what. 
you, you want to go to the left, I'll take the right. You want to go to the right, I'll take the left. You choose. An old, greedy, nasty, God-hating lot said the plains were fertile and beautiful, even though Sodom was full of the wackos. They were evil, exceeding the evil against the Lord. He said, oh, I don't care. They won't influence me. And so soon as he made the choice to take the best, now you got to, hey, Brother Buck, he took the best. That's according to natural man. He said, oh, that's the best. I'm taking the best. I'm taking the fertile plain. The minute Flash was gone, God stepped in. Said, Abe, is, is dummy gone? Is he, is, he, is, he, is he gone? Abe, tell you what I'm going to do. You let him have the best, so he thought. Let me show you something. Look north, south, east, and west. And wherever your foot walks, watch this. You know the junk that, that you're left with? I'll make it the promised land. Don't let no devil lie to you and say, Oh, well, they left. They took the money. They took the best. I lost the talent. Not the coldest day in hell. You serve a God who's the Lord of what's left. He can bring you better singers. He can bring you a better building. He can bring you better Bible studies. He can bring you a better choir. He can bring you better worship. Now, I'm not trying to tell everybody, throw people out. I'm not saying that. But there's just sometimes you got to just shake loose and say, you know what? Listen, I, you sit down. I know this Alex got the greatest thing going on in the world. I understand that. But right after him, I got the greatest music director, choir director that any preacher could ever ask for. She is the, she is the sweetest thing. You never have to worry about moving a piano where the whole hell is going to break loose. You never have to say, well, I want to change the configuration up here. We're going to move this. Because i got some of them up there go, I can change this. Son of a shut up, son of a shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Praise Jesus. And you're all laughing because I'm right in your face. And all of us have the same dumb stuff going on in our assemblies. But when we get back, we need to ask God for some wisdom and direction how to be able to make a change and do the best you can not to lose them. But you've got to hear me. Sometimes you'll just lose them. And how we hate to lose money and tithers and givers as if God was broke. I don't know how we're going to make this church work. Sister Soforth left with a checkbook. And Brother Billy Doe, he just left with his checkbook. And he was going to give your church $200,000. I just see God go, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? No, when God gets ready, he just reaches back and says, let me show you a checkbook that's a real check. I know what I'm talking about. Somebody better shout at me. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. Doesn't matter how much we've lost. We got more left because we got the Lord of what's left. And he's the creator. And he's the recreator. And he's the multiplier. And he's the transformer. Hey, finish reading for me, brother. Williams, please, sir. Just stay with me just a few minutes. I don't know what time it is. For all the land. Which thou seest, yeah. to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. My God in heaven. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed also be numbered. Now who won and who lost? Didn't mean it wasn't painful for Abraham because his nephew's an idiot. Can't help it. You just some people are idiots. They have a degree in idiot. Watch now. Everybody in this building knows this story. Everybody in this building has been a preacher more than six minutes has preached this story. We know the story of Gideon. Remember Gideon? Remember the story of Gideon? And the Lord's going to deliver the Midianites into his hand. Remember that? 
And we start with 32,000. And the Lord says, you got too much? Lose 22. Now he's got 10. All right, Lord. Nah, you still got too much. Uh, take him down the water and everybody's a chicken. Everybody's afraid. See, sometimes you need a test to find out who's scared and who ain't. You usually find that out when you start a building program or start giving emissions. You find out exactly who's scared. And we know the story. Everybody, that's why you're snoring. We know the story. So they do the lapping of the water deal. Yuck, 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 yuck. And now 97 leave. 9,700. I want to ask you a question. I wonder what Gideon felt like. I'm fixing to go in a battle with 32,000 yahoos. And God let me realize that they're a bunch of yahoos. Then I was going to go in a battle with 10,000. And the Lord showed me these guys are all afraid. Now watch what the Lord says. I don't have time to use the Scripture. Here's what it says. By the 300 men that are left, I will deliver the Midianites into your hand. How can you do it? Because I'm the Lord of what's left. And you don't, you don't need a whole bunch. You don't need a bank fault. You don't need. Oh. Okay, stay with me. Sometimes you got to lose some people. Sometimes you got to lose some things to experience God's victory. Because some people are not on the same page with you. Don't worry about who leaves. Don't worry about who quits the church. Don't worry about the brown envelopes that go out the door. Don't worry about the givers and the attendees. Because I am convinced that if some people stay with us, they will cause us defeat. we got to go home and find out. Do we go to church to be counted or are we counted? Too deep for you? Do we go to church to be counted? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or do you count? I read the story. I'm almost there. I read the story when Samuel came to, to Jesse's house. He makes the most wonderful statement. I got it written right here exactly how it is. Are here all thy sons? He says, no, I got one left. And God says, I think I'll anoint and bless the one that's left. The one that everybody else disregarded. The one that his father thought he wasn't even worthy to come up and see the preacher. You may be seemingly the only one left in your family or in your church or in your group. Don't you worry about it. God can put an anointing on you that will blow your socks off. God can use you beyond anything you could ever dream of. Have I lost this? Can I, a few more minutes? Because I don't like you, you know, I'm going to have to stop pointing my finger again. It's okay, just stay with me just another minute. Okay, now watch. They have lost a lot, but you haven't lost the Lord. Because He's the Lord of what's left. Please hear me. He was Lord before you lost. And He's Lord after you've lost. And He's Lord of what's left. He hasn't diminished, altered, changed. He's the same. That's why I said, unto Him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, that we ask a thing according to the power that worketh in us. There's some people hinder your power from working on you because they're cynics and they're critics and they're negative. I tell our church at home all the time, be careful who you sit next to. I told this conference at least 10 or 15, be careful who you sit. Are you stupid or are you a worshiper? <laughs> Have you got your measuring tape out? Have you got your little pencil? Are you trying to see whether I'm a good preacher? Let me save you time. I'm a good preacher. <laughs> Anybody who tells the truth is a good preacher. Listen to Man, I feel like I feel, if I had enough energy, I'd run. I'm telling you, you're not getting what I'm trying to tell you. 
the adversary. This void has been created. He's pointing to the to the void and he's trying to steal your faith and say, you got this big hole. He says, you need to turn around and say, well, I may have this big hole and this big void, but I got a Lord of what little bit I got left. I may have strength gone. I may have joy I've lost. My faith has been damaged. My drive has slowed down. I don't see like I used to, like Brother Huntley said. My dream has got dim. But even if you've got a dream, a dim dream, you've got a God of that dream that can go. Psh. I'm messing up this sermon for you right now. We do believe in Ezekiel in the boneyard, don't we? You know, when the Lord got ready to give him that revival, he took it to a place that all that was left was many bones, dry bones, disconnected bones. And the Lord said, that's all we got left. Watch me deal with what you got left. And the wind blew, and the Spirit came, and a resurrection. And a resurrection took place. I don't care how dead and how dry it's got in your church, in your ministry, in your life. God can breathe on it. Woo! You can sit down. I'm trying to get to where I need to go. Sorry. Taking so long. I'm old. Listen to me. Listen to me. We always talk about Samson. Brother Kinsey, you know what? Get going, Flash. <laughs> you know what? You know what Samson got his victory from? What was left of a donkey. He didn't get it. He said, I got to kill me a thousand Philistines. What can I use? Well, all I can find, the only thing left of that idiot animal is a jawbone. It'll work. And the anointing of the Lord came on was, it didn't look like much. It was just an old dried bone. But you let something that don't look like much and let the Holy Ghost go. And begin to touch that thing and watch the glory of God manifest itself in something that doesn't look like much. Have I out preached you people? You, you need to go home now? I'll go home. I'm ready. And oh, by the way, hey, Brother Johnson, by the way, not only did he crash those skulls in, a thousand of them, which I think is pretty cool. Now watch. He turns around. He drops it. And he says, man, I'm famished. I need a Diet Coke. I, oh, God, you've given me this great victory. And now I'm going to die of thirst. And the Lord says, well, there's a drink in what's left. Don't throw away now what worked for you before just because it doesn't look like much. And the Bible said the Lord claimed a hollow place in that jawbone and he drank and got refreshed. I wonder if too many of us have thrown down the weapon that God has had us use before and now we think there's no more victory in it. But there is a victory in it. There's victory in fasting. There's victory in prayer. There's victory in discipline. There's victory in confession. There's victory in repentance. I'm not looking at you. I'm not looking at you. Get over there, you big deal. I need that scripture in Chronicles, Rev. I'm sorry, I just... I'm flipped out. I am. I, I, I'm so... I know you, you can't... You, we don't... I'm so stinking mad. I am. I'm so mad right now, I feel like Elisha. Bring me a minstrel so my gift will start working. Because right now my gift ain't working. My ticked off is working. You think I'm kidding you? Think I'm going to let a bunch of idiots steal this church from me and from us? Ain't never going to happen, pal. I'm not going to fight against anybody. I'm going to live right. I'm going to do right. I'm going to worship right. I love everybody I can, but I am not going that way. I will not go that way. Brother Shock, this is right. This is right. Holiness is right. Acts 238 is right. Modesty is right. Godliness is right. Separation is right.
I didn't mean to cause you no trouble. Okay, stay with me. Just another, just another portion of Scripture. Could you just take about ten more minutes? Could you take ten more minutes? See, my, my towel says give me five more minutes. But it's a big conference, so I need ten. Watch this. The Lord gave this to me. I didn't steal it from nobody. I didn't hear it from a tape. I had my message all ready to go this past week. I was ready, man. I was steaming heat, man, coming out of my ears. I'm ready to go. I don't need all that singing and all that stuff. Put me up. I'm ready. I don't need nothing to warm me up. I live hot, baby. Hey! Woo! And I was, I was praying. And the Lord spoke to me. Now, I'm going to meet that statement when I go to the judgment. I don't say it very lightly. The Lord spoke to me. But He did. I'm not smart enough to come up with this stuff. He gave it to me. When it popped in my head, I stopped praying. I had my pad where I pray, and I wrote it down. I'm trying to figure out, where is that? I've read that somewhere, but I don't get where. Okay, Lord, what are you doing? And for the next 45 minutes, God just roasted my brain. <laughs> and I ain't got enough time to preach all this, but I want to show you something that the Lord told me to warn this conference before we go home. Read for me, Rev. Moreover, Amaziah gathered Judah together. He gathered Judah together. And made them captains over thousands. Yep. Captains over hundreds. Yep. According to the houses of their fathers. Right. They got 300,000 people in the army. Go ahead. Throughout all Judah and Benjamin. And he numbered them from 20 years old and above. Right. And found them 300,000 choice men. Yep. Able to go forth to war that could handle spear and shield. Now, do not get offended at me. This is Bible. You ought to be shouting and rejoicing when you don't feel the goosebumps. Because truth is truth, and only truth liberates. Now, 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 just watch this. Go ahead, Rev. He hired also a hundred thousand mighty men of valor. Now, I call them Jack Lakes. Out of Israel. No, I call them wackos. For a hundred talents of silk. And they were supposed to be men of valor. You know what that literally meant? They can make his program work. He did care that they were ungodly. They were out of fellowship with God. They were under divine displeasure with God. That God was angry with Israel. He didn't care that this crew that he got to make his program work, that they were indifferent towards God, but God cared. Now watch this. Read a little further. I'll show you. There came a man of God. Oh, to those men of God always showing up all the time, messing up my parade. Saying, O king, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee. Don't let these idiots go with you. For the Lord is not with Israel. Stop. We need to start being more careful who we've got leading our programs and doing our stuff just because they're good at it. A person's motive, spiritual condition, outlook, drive, ambition, and ability is more important than whether they make my choir sound good or they make this church grow up. We are going to give God an answer for two things. What we teach and what we tolerate. He came out to those churches in Revelation and turned around and he said, I know you teach this and teach that. You help my doctor. That's great. But you're putting up with Jezebel. I don't like it. Yeah, but she can sing good. And you're putting up with the doctrine of Balaam and all the idiots that believe that. Yeah, but they're good on the bus ministry and they make the youth group good. And you tolerate those people in your church with the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Which doctrine I hate. Yeah, but they're helping me put my program over. Uh-oh. And that's as negative as I can get. 
And I don't mean to be unkind, and if, if I am, just throw me out of here. Fine. I want my church to grow. Okay. But, Brother Tom, I want my church to grow. I'm going to hire some spiritual moron who can play the electric keyboard and make it stop on a dime and give me eight cents change. And the sucker is worldly and carnal and a charismatic cowboy at heart. And he's going to take my youth group in that direction. And after a while, man, we got all the, if you haven't, that's your business. All these strobe lights and all this rock and roll stuff. And, and I'm off a fast beat. I like to boogaloo and jam too. But there's a border and there's a line you cross sometimes. And you got to be. I thank God for talented people. But I'm going to tell you, I thank God for talented people who are prayerful people, who are fasting people, who are God-fearing people. They may not be able to perform as good as the Hollywood bimbo that you brought in to help your youth group, but God is going to give them favor. I don't know anything more blessed than favor of the king, the smile of God, the pleasure of the potentate. I want that more than I want my program to work. I don't know what time is it. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm trying to finish. Okay. So you turn around. Go ahead, Rev. Get, read, finish reading. But if thou wilt go. If, you, if you're going to go, if you're going to disregard the word of God, he said, go ahead and go and do it. your best shot. Be strong for the battle. Right, because you're going to get your brains knocked out. God shall make thee fall before the enemy. Please hear me. I was I can't look at you. I was praying. And the Lord quickened something in my mind, just quickened in my mind. He says, you better tell my people that just because people leave their churches and they go other places and do other things and they seem to succeed, make them to understand I don't abandon anybody instantly. So many times when they leave the truth of God and go into this foolishness, they are playing with God's reserves and the Father's resources. Just like the prodigal. The prodigal wasn't bankrupt when he left the farm. The prodigal had all dead stuff. And as long as he, as long as he used dead stuff, everybody liked him. But after a while, if you separate yourself from the source, dead stuff. It may not be two weeks. It may be two years. It may be 12 months. But I'm here to tell you, people that walk away from the things of God are not going to end up with a pretty picture. Because God's got the power to thrust down and God's got the power to pick up. I'm sorry if I've offended anybody. I didn't mean to. Okay. I'm, I'm almost done. Please forgive me. I'm almost done. You can sit down. I'm almost done. I have to say this because it's what the Lord gave me. You don't mind that. You're superintendent. You're still a politician? Yeah. Okay. I don't mean a politician. You're in a political office. I'm sorry. That's different. Right. The Lord just gave this to me. He said, tell my people. Give them a warning. They, they don't determine the doctrine they teach by the debts they owe. Well, we got our church in such a debt and a financial fix. Man, if I start teaching on some stuff and straightening some things out here, I can't afford to lose the money. You can't afford to lose the favor of God. I want the favor of God. I want the favor of God. I'm not against growth. I'm not against things working. But I want the favor of God. I don't want to hook up with somebody that is not in sync with the Lord. I don't want to hook up with somebody so they can do the job better than I can do it. That's not the issue. And I don't even know what I'm talking about with this little statement that he gave me. Tell the people. Be careful that they don't teach their doctrine or withhold their doctrine because of the money that the church owes. Well, I can't 
I can't take care. I can't take care of some things because some money people might leave. Well, God, well, let them leave. You still got the Lord of what's left. He owns the cattle on a thousand hill. He knows where all the gold is, all the silver is. He knows where the jewels are. He knows where the pearls are. And he knows where you are. And I hope I'm not being misunderstood. I'm not trying to tell you to take the license and beat the living daylights at everybody and be a smart out. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying there's an intrusion because of this void that's been created here. And this intrusion is working like a cancer in the body. And we've got to stand against it. And we've got to go after God. And we don't need to prostitute the principles of God because we're afraid of consequences. I guess I've preached long enough. I guess that preached. You can stand. I preached long enough. I didn't get to my sermon. I'm so sorry. It was a good. It really was. It was a good one. Anybody ever read the book of Job? Anybody? You know what we get out of the book of Job? All that he lost. What about the guy that showed up in the whirlwind in chapter 38? He was the Lord that what he had left. And if you've got the Lord and what you've got left, even when you have lost the cattle and the oxen and the sheep and your children and your friends and understanding, if the Lord of what you've got left, Brother Buck, if he shows up out of that cloud, in five minutes he can give you twice as much as you lost. Have I lost this audience now? You're just tired. Okay, I understand. I, I wish I, I could have got to my sermon. Thank you. Brother Williams, for being so kind, I wanted to go home and read it. Elijah, and he comes into the, wo the widow of Zarephath, and he says, fix me a little cake. Watch what she says. As the Lord God, as the Lord thy God liveth, all I have left is a handful of meal. And he says, that's enough. He said, you let God have what you got left, and I'll make sure that there's enough food in that barrel for the next three years. It didn't look like much. Just a hand, brother, just a handful. All I got is a handful of meal and a little cruise of oil. And you read the rest of the story. He says, Thus saith the Lord. The meal will not waste, the, the oil will not waste until the Lord sends rain. And him and her and the kid live for that next three years on the little stuff that was left because she had the Lord of what's left. Same thing with Elisha when he finds the two creditors have come to take my children. Sure, that's what's going on right now. That lying creditor wants to take the next generation. He says, well, what do you need? I need a miracle. Well, what do you got that I can work with? All I have is a little cruise oil. Enough. Wait a minute. Let me just pray. Oh, Lord, of what's left, could you multiply what's left? Pots, 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 pots. The miracle only stopped when they had no more pots. He's the Lord of what's left. We all love to talk about Moses, right? Moses, what? Watch. He was 80 years old. He ain't got much left. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to look at you sideways just for a second. Now look, listen to me. Watch what he did. God is going to set an entire nation free. All he needs is something that's left. And he asked Moses, uh, you got anything left? He said, I only have one thing. Uh, I have this rod. Boy, you're in pretty sad shape when you're 80 years old. You're down to a rod. And the Lord says, a rod, huh? Let me have that rod. Let's let's do a little magic trick on the on the Nile. Let's do it on the lice and the flies. Let's let, 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 watch me. Give me that. Give me that thing you got left. Ready? Open the Red Sea with it. 
I don't know what the devil's trying to make fun of some of you and say, you ain't got enough left. All you need is something left. If you've got something left, the God that is the Lord of what's left can multiply it and bless it and miraculously use it. Now, why don't you throw your hands up and ask God to show you what you got left and believe no matter what you might have lost, what you got left is enough because you got the Lord of what's left. Can, can I say something, Reverend Mike? I'm, I'm closed. I am. First and last time, I'm closed. I had him read this scripture. I'm out of time. I preached too long. The Bible says that when Solomon dedicated the temple, 1 Kings 8, remember the Philistines had taken the Ark of the Covenant, remember? Captured it. When they brought it back, here's the words. When Solomon put the Ark of the Covenant into the temple, there was nothing left in the Ark but the tables of the law. In other words, the world stole the supernatural provision of manna. And the world wanted the miracle Aaron's rod that budded because the world wants supernatural provision and they want supernatural signs and wonders. What they didn't want was the Word. But the Bible says when they dedicated the temple, all that was left in that box was the Word. And the glory of the Lord fell down and filled the temple. I'm here to tell you, if we keep preaching the Word of God, the Word of God can bring the glory back to our churches. Come on, somebody. Lift your hands. Come on, worship the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, get over what you lost. Get over what you don't have anymore. Wipe, come on, dry your eyes, lift your hands and say, God, I don't know why I've lost what I've lost, but you are the Lord of what i got left. I will not compromise. I will not step back. I'm going to believe what I've always believed because he is God. He can take what you got left. He can do more with what you have left than all that you had if you walk away from truth and you walk away.